This is my mom, Laura. We are more than 2,000 miles away from each other. We are testing the teleconferencing system that we just put on Google Cloud. <laughs> Today, I'm going to unveil all the secrets so that you can host your conferencing system using Kubernetes. One of the most important secrets of our system is the horizontally scalable backend. I'll show you how we arrived at this design by showing you first the non-scalable version and then building on it. Here's the app that we are going to deploy. We have two servers. One of them serves the UI, while the other handles all the connections and relays, all the packets between the peers. If this is your first time on this channel, check out this video to get more context on how our teleconferencing system works. The problem with this architecture is that Actix Web could crash and the whole system will go down. So let's add a bunch of instances of Actix Web. And this is better because you could potentially expose five different URLs of your application. And if one of them goes down, your UI could try to connect to the next one. Moreover, notice how all the Actix Web services are independent of each other. If you connect to instance one, you cannot see the sessions on instance two. Let's fix this by using a pop sub system. A pop sub system allows us to communicate all the Actix Web instances using message passing. This is better. If you connect to any Actix Web instance, you can see all the sessions, but we still have the issue with the five separate URLs. Moreover, how about we want to add a sixth instance? Now we need to hard code another URL into the client code. Luckily, there are services called network balancers that can help you to distribute traffic amongst all the Actix Web instances and only expose a single URL to the client. And just for the sake of it, let's also throw the UI server behind the load balancer. Probably we do not need as many instances of the UI because it's just serving a static website. Now that we have a clear picture of what we are going to build, let's modify the Actix web code so that it is horizontally scalable. Our Actix server has the chat server actor, which is responsible for keeping a map with all the rooms along with all the WebSocket sessions. We use chat session to represent each of the peers. When a peer pushes a media packet update, chat server is responsible for relaying the packet to all the other peers in that room. Before starting, I want to say thank you to all the contributors. Ronan, Leone, Jaster. Let's go, guys. We can do this together. As we discussed before, our goal is to make this server horizontally scalable by using a messaging system. We selected NATS because it is a very lightweight middleware with an amazing Rust API. Kudos to the authors of this crate, it's fantastic. Instead of relaying all the media packets amongst the peers, chat server will control a single NATS connection that all chat sessions actors or peers will use to exchange messages back and forth. All chat sessions will use the following subject to send messages. Room.theRoomName.SessionID where session ID is the unique identifier of the web socket, like a username or an email. NATS is designed to distribute messages amongst services efficiently. We consider it to be wise to outsource all the packet distribution logic to it. NATS has an awesome Helm chart that we can use and will allow us to configure a robust cluster. We will discuss Helm in a second, we got you. Now, let's add NATS to our Docker Compose. As you can see, this is really easy. Now let's test it locally to ensure that everything still works. Seems like things still work. Let's move on. <laughs> there are ways to use Docker Compose to host a complex system, including hosting multiple replicas of a single service and adding a load balancer in front of it. But we feel that this is really pushing the limits of the tool. We are working with Leon from Nexhat to destroy our Docker Compose setup and replace it with NanoCL a very promising container orchestration system written from the ground up in Rust. We are committed to moving our teleconferencing system to NanoCL as soon as possible. Today, the next best thing we have is Kubernetes, or Kates for short. Kates allows you to orchestrate containers across multiple hosts, and it is supported out of the box by most cloud providers like Google Cloud, Linode, and AWS. We won't use Kates directly. Instead, we will use Helm. Think of Helm charts as analogous to the App Store. When you want to install a new application on your phone, you do not gather all the pieces and compile the app yourself. Instead, you go to the App Store and download a single package that installs that application for you. Helm charts provide the same ease of deployment for applications and services on a Kates cluster. Griffin designed and built a Helm chart to deploy our conferencing system, which is available in the SumRS repo. 
Having a clean, easy-to-use Helm chart allows you to iterate on your system fast without being afraid of breaking something. The most important file for you to know about is values.yaml. You can use this file to customize several things, such as environment variables to be used, the Docker image for Actix web and for the UI. We can also control the URL that we want to use to expose both the backend and the frontend. We will add links in the description so that you can download Helm and get started. Whenever we want to deploy a new version of the Helm chart, we just run Helm dependency update. This will ensure that all the changes that you did are parsed. This command will make the Kate server render the Helm manifest file so that you can make sure that your ingress controllers, services, deployment, and other Kate's objects look as expected. Let's take a look at the manifest and explain it. This manifest file essentially consists of several Kubernetes objects, including services, deployments, and ingress services. There are two services defined in this manifest, one for the Rustlemania API and another one for the UI. The API service listens on port 8080 and the UI service on port 80. Services in Kubernetes are crucial as they allow different parts of the application to communicate with each other and also expose the application to traffic from the outside the cluster. Deployments are the next components defined. Deployments in Kubernetes describe the desired state for your application, like how many replicas of a pod you want to run. The manifest has a deployment for the Rustlemania API with three replicas, which means Kubernetes ensures that three instances of the API are running at all times. The second deployment is the UI with only one replica. The deployments also specify the Docker images to be used, the environment variables needed by the application, and the ports that the containers should expose. Environment variables and secrets. Within the deployments, environment variables are being set for the containers. Some of these environment variables, such as the database URL and the OAuth client ID, are retrieved from Kubernetes secrets. Secrets are used to store sensitive information like API keys, passwords, or tokens, so they are not exposed in the configuration files. Finally, there's an ingress resource. Ingress is an API object that manages external access to services within a cluster. You typically use ingress to manage HTTP or HTTPS access. In this case, the ingress object is configured to route traffic for api.rustlemania.com to the Rustlemania API service on port 8080, and the traffic for rustlemania.com to the Rustlemania UI service on port 80. It also handles SSL certificates via annotations to ensure that the traffic is served over HTTPS. We installed Cert Manager using Helm. Let me tell you a little bit about Cert Manager. Cert Manager is a powerful native Kates tool designed to facilitate the automation of issuing and managing TLS certificates. In modern web applications, Securing communications with TLS encryption is not just an option, but a necessity. Cert Manager streamlines the process of obtaining certificates from various certificate authorities, such as Let's Encrypt or Self-Signed Certificates. It also handles the full life cycle of the certificates, including issuing, renewal, and expiration. Cert Manager then communicates with the specified certificate authority, automates the domain validation challenges, and once a certificate is issued, it stores the certificate in a Kubernetes cluster. This secret can then be used, for example, in an ingress resource to secure traffic to your services. This automation of certificate management is critical in cloud-native environments, where manual certificate handling would be error-prone and unscalable. It's very important to mention the cost of these things. So you have the cost of the computers where your Kubernetes runs, then probably you have some DNS cost, network transfers, the load balancer, and some companies charge you a fee for managing your Kubernetes cluster. So make sure to check with your cloud provider to ensure that you're not surprised by a huge bill. Guys, this was a blast to put together. This is the summer of Rust. We are going to keep plowing through. I truly enjoy working with you, especially like coding side by side. Let's keep plowing through and see you in the next one. Bye.